Hello, good afternoon. I am Dr. Shayla Toombs Withers at Essence of Health Wellness Clinic located here in downtown Chattanooga. Thank you for joining me today. So today I will be sharing a few updates about the coronavirus, COVID-19, but the focus of today's chat today is to share with you some tips to enhance your telehealth experience. So many medical offices have closed in order to help flatten the curve and lessen the spread of coronavirus in their areas. However, healthcare providers still want to be able to provide services to their patients while also protecting the health of their patients and themselves. And so telemedicine and telepsychiatry has been able to help us be able to still take care of patients without posing a risk to ourselves as healthcare providers or, or posing a risk uh, to patients um, from spreading this virus from one to another. This model of healthcare is not new. Um, telemedicine and telehealth has been around for quite some time. It's been uh, practiced for many years um, in the realm of medical care as well as psychiatric care. Um, however, a lot of people still may have never um, had a telehealth experience, uh, and they and we have seen over the past few weeks uh, that more people are using this model of care and that it has rapidly grown to more people using a telehealth uh, model of care over the past few weeks. So I do practice telemedicine. Um, I have practiced telemedicine in the realm of providing care to patients for almost four to five years. Um, I practice telemedicine here with my patients at Essence of Health Wellness Clinic that is a part of uh, their membership package. Uh, but I also occasionally provide telemedicine care um, to patients with some of the more popular online, um, the more popular online services for telemedicine too. Um, and over the years, so what I've noticed is just that there is a difference in telemedicine visits that go really, really well versus telemedicine visits that don't go so well. And when those visits go really, really well, everyone ends up happy. The, the physician uh, feels like they really helped that patient. The patient feels like they were really helping. They've had a good experience. When things don't go so well, well, both the physician and the patient become frustrated. The physician becomes frustrated because they, they figure, you know, well, maybe if I saw this, this person, uh, this patient in person versus online, then maybe the experience would have been better. And then the patient thinks, well, you know, I may have wasted my money on this visit um, because things didn't go the way they thought they would go or the way they expected. Um, things to go. So I am going to provide you with some tips um, that I have learned and that I have noticed that make a, tele a telehealth um, experience better for both the patient and the physician providing the care. So tip number one is to choose video or text um, as your method for telehealth. And I, I recommend that over a particular phone only option. Many of the telehealth places will allow you to pick if you want to communicate with uh, that provider by way of video or if you want to do um, a phone line, if you want to get a phone call instead. And then there are some other um, telehealth companies that allow for text messaging. And so the difference is on video, we can see a number of things. On video, we can see things like rashes. Um, I can look at your throat and see your sore throat and see if it looks like it it's a possible strep throat. I can, you know, see if there are pus pockets back there or if your throat's red um, or swollen. Uh, I can see um, things on your skin. If there were some lesion you may have been concerned about, uh, is it something that's a potential cancer? Is it something that, you know, you're allergic to? Or is it something you, do you have the shingles? I can see those things on video um, and be able to ascertain a, a better idea as to what's going on. Um, however, um, with text, with text, you can also see those things because usually people are able to upload pictures, which is really nice. But however, when people just choose a phone experience, uh, then we're not able to ascertain as many things by phone. So of course, I cannot see a rash through your phone. Um, I cannot see your sore throat through your phone. Yes, I can certainly listen and see if your throat sounds like it may be uh, being affected from some type of infection or some type of illness, but it's not as helpful to me to just talk to you on the phone and not be able able to 
get a, a clear picture or a clear idea as to what may be going on with your sore throat or your rash just by way of a phone call. So if you have an option, choose video first um, and second to video would be a text messaging option. Uh, tip number two, if you have something going on that you may have a fever or there may be concern about a fever, get a thermometer. A lot of people will um, go to these services and they'll say, yeah, I had a fever. And then you'll say, well, what was your temperature? And they say, well, I don't know, but I felt warm. Um, and so feeling warm, it, it's, it's subjective, what we call it, meaning, yes, yeah, it's just your feeling, but that doesn't, that doesn't necessarily mean that you actually had a, a true fever. So we like to see those numbers. Um, so I always tell people, get a thermometer. Here's one that I particularly like, um, this one, is a digital thermometer. And so you're able to quickly get a readout on it. Uh, and it's, I found it to be very accurate. I use this one here in the office at Essence of Health. I also have one at home that I use for my own kids. And so I, I really like that thermometer. So, but any thermometer is better than not having one at all. I do know right now with coronavirus um, being in all of the communities uh, that a lot of places are going low on thermometers. So if you can find one at all, then get one and just have one on hand um, because it's always useful to have. Tip number three is if you have a history of blood pressure problems and you're going to be chatting with your doctor about your blood pressure or you're going to be following up with your doctor for a, med a medicine refill um, with your telehealth visit, then it'll be a good idea to have a blood pressure cuff. Um, and so because we do want to be able to monitor your blood pressure. So yes, of course, you know, by way of a phone or a video, we can't really tell what your blood pressure is without adequately being able to monitor it. So get a blood pressure cuff to have at home, especially if you're on blood pressure medications, if you have a history of heart problems, um, it's, good, it's a good idea to have one. And when I recommend cuffs to patients, I recommend that they get a cuff that actually goes around the arm and not one that just goes around the wrist. And the reason being for that is a lot of times it's hard to get a accurate blood pressure with just the wrist monitors. Um, and it's usually more user friendly and easier for patients to get a good blood pressure from their arm. Um, and so here's particularly a blood pressure cuff that I like. It's the Omron arm cuff. Um, the reason I like this cuff, if you can see it on the picture, is that one, the numbers are really big on it. And so it makes it usually user friendly, especially for our older population who may have some vision issues. They're able to uh, be able to read their, their readings out really easily without issue. Um, this one also um, shares heart rate with you. And so it has it right there. Uh, we'll tell you what your heart rate is so we can know if your heart rate's running too high. And it also has nice pictures actually on the cuff of it that tells you, makes it very user friendly because it tells you how to put it on properly so that you get a good reading. Um, and some other tips for you when you are taking your blood pressure at home. So things you want to remember, you want to have a, a table around you. You don't want to just, you know, lay your arm, let it fall to the side when you check in it. You do want to have a table around you or something that you can prop your arm up and rest your arm without having to support it. You want to try to get your arm at the level of your heart um, if you can to also enhance the, the uh, accuracy of that blood pressure reading that you're getting at home. So make sure you're checking your blood pressure. Uh, something else that's very helpful to us when you are doing a telehealth visit is being able to obtain some other vital signs. So um, here's a pulse oximeter. And what this little thing does is it will actually read your pulse ox, it will read your pulse, so your heart rate, but it will also give you an oxygen saturation number. And what that helps us uh, healthcare providers with is to know if you are starting to have some type of respiratory concern that may be affecting your breathing and it may be um, affecting your oxygenation in your body, because that's helpful to us to know um, really the severity of your illness and your respiratory issue. Uh, these things can be purchased 
pretty much at any pharmacy now or online or at a number of places. Um, so it's, it's a good idea to have one. Do you have to have one? No, but it will be helpful, um, especially for those folks who have a history of asthma, uh, those folks who have a history of COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Um, and so any chronic respiratory diseases. Uh, and with coronavirus right now, we know that cough and shortness of breath are some of the paramount symptoms of this virus. And so people um, can check their own oxygen oxygenation with that pulse oximeter uh, to be able to help us to know, you know, how severe is your illness. And that's another thing that kind of goes back to that tip where I was saying that you should choose a video visit if you have that option, because that also allows the physician to see, one, how you're breathing, two, if you appear to be short of breath or it looks like you're having trouble catching your breath, um, because that gives us a better picture and a better idea to be able to make proper recommendations to you as the patient um, about your health and what those next steps should be. Uh, so next thing, and this one's really a, a cool little gadget. Um, and so this one is, it's an otoscope, but what it does is it's, it's a camera. And so it attaches to your cell phone, your iPad, your computer. Um, and what it allows us to see is that we can look inside of your ear. It can also be used to look inside, to look at a person's throat uh, with that camera. And so that one is a particularly good little gadget to have um, for folks who may have kids at home. So uh, a lot of the pediatricians um, and myself as a family doctor, I also see kids. Um, and so a lot of those kids are you know, prone to ear infections. And so if you have one of those kids at home, it's a good idea to, to maybe invest and get one of those um, little cameras because that way what you can do is you can just lay it there on the kid's ear and then you can show the, the telehealth provider that you may be working with what's on that camera and that way they can see, yeah, is this another infection or is there something else that may be going on there? And, one last tip that's very important for telehealth is to make sure the, the doctor that you're talking with knows um, about any history of medication allergies that you may have, as well as any medications that you may be taking. Um, in my experience in practicing telemedicine for a few years, patients don't always update those um, the apps and the the menus of options that you have there. Patients don't always update those to tell us exactly what they're on, but that's actually important because if we want to prescribe you some new medication, um, it's good for us to know if that medication may interact with something that you may al already be taking or may already be on. Um, some of the newer telemedicine platforms will automatically Pull prescriptions from pharmacies and they kind of know what you're on, but not all of them do that. So it is important um, that you make sure that your physician or your healthcare provider is aware of what you may be taking and what things you may be allergic to so that they don't prescribe something that may be harmful to you because ultimately we do want to help you. Okay, so those are my tips about enhancing your telemedicine experience because I'm sure many of you right now will likely be having a telemedicine or telehealth experience um, upcoming just in today's climate with the coronavirus um, in most communities right now. And so here are a few updates for you guys. So right now uh, in the state of Tennessee, and particularly Hamilton County, uh, where Essence of Health Wellness Clinic is here in Chattanooga, and so we currently have five positive test results. And this data comes from the Hamilton County Health Department, and it was updated um, on yesterday. And so I tell people with all of these updates, they may change hour by hour because that's just how rapid things are moving right now. Um, and test results are coming out every day. Um, so these numbers may change. Um, from the next time you hear them. But currently, from the latest update on March 19th, there are five positive results in Hamilton County. In Tennessee, as a state, the state lab has reported 33 positive results in the state of Tennessee, but amongst the commercial labs, they have reported 121 positive test results for coronavirus. And so that's a total of 154 positive cases. This was actually last updated um, yesterday from the state of Tennessee. So this number has pro probably already changed also. 
Uh, but some other interesting things that I found were that Davidson County and Williamson County, um, which is up near Nashville, both still have the highest number of cases for the state of Tennessee um, with a total of about 105 of those 154 positive cases. And the age range of patients in Tennessee, what I also found to be interesting, uh, the majority of the cases are, have been found have been between the ages of 21 and 50. And so I know before the, the news that we had gotten that was brought out was initially it was that most people that were being affected were elderly individuals. But as we're seeing with these numbers from positive cases that have come back, is not so much just the elderly, but is the majority of the cases for the state of Tennessee are the age groups of 21 to 50. So everybody um, has the possibility of being affected from this virus. Uh, when we look at the national numbers right now, so in the United States, uh, this is from the Centers from Disease Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, uh, and they also have the caveat that these numbers um, may not be accurate as of right now because it's hard for a lot of places to keep the latest update as more results are rolling in. But all 50 states now have been found to have positive cases of coronavirus. Um, in the United States, there have been 10,442 positive cases that have been reported, and there have been thus far 150 deaths that have been uh, related to coronavirus. So it's still, you know, rapidly spreading through our communities, through our uh, state, as well as through our country. So it is really important for everyone to take this serious. I do just want to reiterate the importance of people really just staying home, um, not coming into close contact, making sure you're keeping that six foot of distance between you and others um, to prevent the spread uh, of this virus and to prevent the occurrence of rapidly progressing more deaths um, in our country from this virus. Continue to make sure that you're washing your hands really good. Remember that recommendation for to wash your hands at least 20 seconds with soap and water. Um, if you can find hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer is great too. Uh, make sure it's at least 60% alcohol, but make sure you're washing your hands routinely. Cover your mouth. Um, if you already are having symptoms of coronavirus, which once again is cough, fever or shortness of breath, then make sure you're covering your mouth if you are in public, if for some reason you do have to go to a grocery store or go do something, um, pick up a medication, make sure you're covering your mouth and, and not spreading those respiratory droplets onto others. The, so that's my, my chat for today. I do thank you all for joining me. Um, remember that the essence of health is in you. I am accepting new patients. I continue to accept new patients, even with this virus going on. Um, as previously discussed, um, telehealth is a part of the membership package for being a patient here at Essence of Health Wellness Clinic. So my patients have already had access via video visits. Um, they get a phone number that they're able to send text messages to me um, for any concerns or any updates um, or send pictures like we discussed that's helpful in the telehealth experience. And so that's all part of the membership package. I am currently waiving the $75 enrollment fee. Um, and, and that's really just because with coronavirus, I understand that people are facing financial challenges. Uh, people are facing uncertainties about their employment. And so I am waiving that fee right now. Um, so you would only be responsible for your monthly fee, which is $70 for adults um, and $20 for children on the adult plan. I do have a question here and thank you for joining me. So the question is, how long does the virus live on surfaces? Okay, and so what's being reported right now is that for surfaces like cardboard um, or more non-porous surfaces, those things have been found to live for about 24 hours on those surfaces. Um, in terms of respiratory droplets in the air, that has been found to linger for about three hours um, from the data that I have read. So in a lot of places, uh, particularly medical clinics, if they are still seeing patients, um, it's been recommended that they at least quarantine that room off after each patient for at least three hours um, to allow any potential viral path pathogens to dissipate from the air. Uh, in terms of surfaces like um, tabletops, plastic surfaces, uh, this virus has been shown to linger for a few days and can last for days on those surfaces. So you want to make sure that you're really cleaning um, those surfaces really well with 
uh, some type of disinfectant or bleach. And also another reason that you always want to make sure that you're washing your hands really well before you touch your face, um, before you touch your eyes, or before you eat or drink something um, so that you don't um, pass these germs along to yourself and to others. And so those are the things in terms of um, viral, viral pathogens living on surfaces. So feel free to ask any more questions in the comment section. I will uh, update the comments with those answers. I will also update the comment section with uh, links from the products that we talked about today um, that could be helpful for enhancing your telehealth experience. So thank you for joining me, uh, everyone. Stay well out there. Thanks.